All right, we got breaking news right now. According to uh, Woj, ESPN's Adrian Wojnarowski, the 76ers have fired Brett Brown. It is official. Sources tell ESPN 76ers head coach Brett Brown is out. He is expected uh, to be a precursor for more upheaval with the 76ers, whose senior leadership, including General Elton Brand, will begin exploring changes in the front office structure. That, according to Woj, Bobby Marks, ESPN's front office insider, comments on at a perfect time. He wrote yesterday about what is next for the Sixers following their loss sweep against the Boston Celtics. But I guess the first domino came down just moments ago, Bobby, as the head coach, Brett Brown, seven years has been fired. And uh, I guess we all thought that was coming, right or wrong. We knew it was kind of this. Is, this was about one of the only decisions that they could make because they're tied to so many contracts. Yeah, I mean you're not you're not going to fire the players. <laughs> I mean I've been around this business long enough to realize that you know eventually it kind of runs its course, and you know we saw it in Toronto with with Dwayne Casey, and I think Casey probably had a little, uh, probably more success than than Brett did um, in, in Philadelphia, and they made a change, and you know turned out they won a you know won an NBA championship the, the following year, and. You know, seven years or eight years is a, is a long time to kind of be in, in the um, uh, on the sidelines here. And um, fair or unfair, you know, no Ben Simmons, a, a roster that probably doesn't fit, that you kind of knew that, um, you know, the Brett's job was going to be in, in jeopardy. And, and when you get swept in the, uh, in the first round, that, that, that basically sealed the deal. Uh, obviously, yeah, you mentioned seven years, long time here, but man, I mean, he had the three years of the losing. Yeah. Then once they got out of that, uh, they go 28, 52, 51, but he did it with so many different rosters. I mean, sure. did he get a fair shake? I mean, do you think the seven years that he got a, a fair shake to say, Hey, you were a good coach and it was, you know, our fault because, or you were not a good coach. There's a lot of people listening right now, Bobby, who thinks Brett was just a, not a good coach. Yeah, I mean, you can make that argument, sure. Maybe in game adjustments or as far as you know, we can talk about the Boston series from um, you know from, from two years ago, but they were a climbed multiple bounces <laughs> from going to the Eastern Conference Finals last year. And and you're right. I mean, you when you change out the parts, and we'll throw the first three years out the window that that group there, but. When you go from um, J.J. Redick and Jimmy Butler, Tobias Harris, Al Horford, um, multiple different players coming, uh, Robert Covington, Sarnett coming in and out. And then I think the big thing I talked about yesterday was you know, – uh, we got a bad connection with Bobby Marks. We'll see if we can't get him back on the line and uh, kind of fire him back up here uh, because, he, you know, obviously Bobby's worked in the NBA front office circles for a long time. And, you know, he's kind of hit on a couple of things that we've talked about, Broads, throughout the show today is uh, he, did he get a fair shake? Not sure. You know, you have the first incarnation with Robert Covington, Dario Saric, the Ilyasova, that whole crew – and then they bring in J.J. Redick and that whole crew, and then they bring in Jimmy Butler, and then they go. So let's bring Bobby back in here, uh, and, and we'll let you continue going on there. You were breaking up on us there, and obviously there's some interesting stuff to be talking about here. So, yeah, good coach or not, uh, had a lot of roster turnover. Yeah, I mean, and I think, too, the front office, right? I mean, when you go through, um, you know, with Sam Hinkie and then Brian Colangelo and then you have Elton Brand and you have basically three different philosophies and how to build out a roster, um, that certainly does not help. But uh, it's it's a ruthless business, and we kind of, I guess, we turn the page and we kind of see what happens next year. Is there a head coach out there that makes the most sense to you when it comes to the next hire? Well, I think you can look at it two different ways. I think you could go steal a page from Toronto and go look internal, right? So is that Ime Odoka, who's on the on the you know the assistant coach, who's been mentioned for a lot of uh, positions that are going to be open, and is, is from that Spurs you know pedigree here. And we saw what happened in um, you know in Toronto with Nick Nurse. I don't think you have to get a guy that has you know, that veteran leadership, I think if you're going to go internal, I think that's maybe the way to go. And I think certainly if you look outside of the, outside of the box and you're probably looking at, you know, probably Ty Lu, you know, who is in Cleveland and has been able to handle a, you know, a roster, you know, rosters in the past that have been a little bit hamstrung from, from financials. Of course you had LeBron, 
Um, but you know, I you know I just updated the piece that's you know from yesterday, and I think that the big thing would be for me if I am a head coach, and you see how this process goes, is that you know you're getting hammered with questions from the front office and ownership. But if I'm front, if I'm a head coach prospective, I'm the one kind of asking a lot of different questions here, guys. As far as you know, are we married to this roster? Can we get out of some of these contracts? Do I have the mid the tax mid level to use? What are we doing with finances going forward? What's the future of Elton in the in that um in that front office there? Um, so it's not that cut and dry where all of a sudden this is you know job number one that's going to be available. Yeah, I know uh, we were talking about this earlier. If you are a head coach out there looking for a job, and of course if you get offered a job, you probably take it, but. Um, is this an attractive team with Joel Embiid, Ben Simmons? St- you know, essentially the, the front office isn't going to give up on them. Tobias Harris, Al Horford. Does another coach say I can win with that roster? Oh sure. I mean, you 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 inherit. Yeah, you have two. You, know, you have two All NBA players with with Simmons and Embiid here. I think. Um, I think the big thing is that you're going to have to show some creativity as far as what you do with Al. Um, I thought yesterday, guys, that the, the best stretch that the Sixers had one was Al was at the five and Tobias was at the four and, and Joel was on the bench. <laughs> I thought they played, that was probably as good as they've have played. I think maybe it was in that third quarter there. Um, so you've got to figure out, I mean, you, you've got 84 million of, of, of Al Horford. I know some of it's not all guaranteed, but you've got to figure out that's your big fight, your big free agent splash. And, um, but yeah, I think it, it does have appeal, but you go, you're going to have to be, um, you, you're going to have to show some create creativity here because the likelihood is that those four players are back, um, along with probably Josh Richardson. And then, and then you're looking at the draft as far as what you can do with, with some of those picks. And maybe that's kind of how you start building out your bench a little bit. I uh, talk with Bobby Marks, uh, front office insider, ESPN.com. He has a whole piece on what's next for the Sixers. Obviously, if you're just tuning in, Brett Brown has been fired. And uh, what's next for them? Obviously, the coaching search will begin. We'll see. But, you know, it seems that a lot of people, yeah, a lot of people here were done with Brown. It was just kind of apathy, fatigue, time to move on, you know, see what happens. But are the problems above Brown even bigger? Mm-hmm. Well, there's plenty of blame. <laughs> I mean, it's not just Brett here. I mean, there is, um, there's plenty of blame as far as how they've maybe handled the draft. I mean, they've had, I, you know, when I'm writing this article, it's, it's astounding that in the last, including this year, the last three years, they've had five picks in every draft, you know, either first or seconds. And I know you got shaped that one year because you moved up to, I think, um, 54 and, and Matisse, you know, you're able to do some things with the first and second and to move up. But like you missed out on a lot of good players because you sold the picks or you moved the picks and you, and you, and you traded out and you got future draft assets. I'm interested in what they're doing with the four seconds this year. So yeah, I mean, there's, there is plenty, um, plenty of blame. I think they probably miscalculated the Tobias trade and, and that that's what happens when you give up so much, in a trade like they did, um, you know, uh, I guess two years ago that then you are almost forced in an overpay because you have to keep that player. I've seen that happen a lot of times guys. And, and that, and that's what happens is, and I said like that, that great feel good story from three years ago when you had all that flexibility and you lost to Boston in the first round, like you don't have that anymore, right? Like now you go from this, you know, young up and coming team to a team that is overpriced, uh, expensive, and a team that's lost in the first round. I don't think this needs to happen until a new coach comes in, but do you think it's time to move on from either Embiid or Ben Simmons? You know what? If you ask me the choice, I think it would be Embiid. I, I, I do. I mean, I think, I, you know, like, like when is enough here? Like, when are you going to get in shape? Right. Like when, like, and I don't want to hear the same excuse after every, uh, after every season here, I thought after you lost to Toronto last year, that was going to be enough. And, and I actually don't think he's held accountable enough. I really don't. And he is so talented here, but the trend is there during the game. You know, when he's out of shape and he's at the three point line and he's, he doesn't want to get down low and post up here and he's, you know, he's jacking up threes. And, and we've just seen the same old story from, from Joel the last, you know, last couple of years. And, 
every guy's traded. I don't know if you can get the maximum amount that if you wanted to put Ben out there on the trade market. I, I, would, I wouldn't do that, even with the, with the injury here. So I, I, don't, I don't think you do, um, but I think whoever comes in, if it's the head coach, I mean, I do think that, you know, job number one is, is to probably make Joel a little more accountable. Um, we talk about the problems with the contracts. Bobby, you've been in front offices. You've had to take these calls and make these calls. Does anybody listen to you on Al Horford or Tobias Harris? Oh, man. Well, I think with, you know, what happens is that you have to identify. I, I call it the buyer's remorse trade, right? So you, what you have to do is you have to go out and identify somebody from last offseason, right, who signed guys that have remorse on. And, you know, it's like, is it Sacramento, right? Like Buddy Heald, um, uh, to Harrison Barnes, guys like that, where you're basically swapping out contracts, uh, you know, for, like, you know, for Tobias, for those two players. Um, that's kind of what you're looking at. I think the Al Horford, the Al contract is, is really hard to move. I mean, based on his age, kind of what is left on that contract here. I mean, I always, I always give the scenario. If, if, if Al Horford was a free agent, would you sign him to a three or $84 million contract right now? If he had cap space. And I would say probably the answer is, is no, but you do make the calls. You know, maybe there's a team that that loses in the next week here that thinks they better they're better than they are and is, and is willing to kind of go that route. But I, I think it's unlikely with Al Tobias is interesting, but he's got, I mean, he still has 140 million dollars left on that contract. Well, how much change do you think can actually happen from an on court standpoint if you didn't move anyone and you come back with just a new head coach? Yeah, I mean, I think health, you know, health is important. I mean, health Ben Simmons and his team, you know, is, is still a top five team in, in the Eastern Conference here. Can you get up to where, I remember where Brooklyn is going to be, Toronto, uh, Miami. So, yeah, I mean, I think you're in that mix. I think we do forget that Ben was out for this series. I think when you have a coach with maybe a little bit of a, a different mentality, um, and it is a different voice, then yeah, things do turn around, turn around quickly. I think it is important as far as what they do in the draft and how they kind of trim around the edges with their, with their bench. Cause the likelihood is guys like Alec Burks are not going to be back next year. Um, so we'll see what happens there. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it, I mean, I know we've kind of painted as like a dead end, you know, we're at a dead end here right now, but I don't know if we're quite there yet. I think we're probably still a little bit raw from, you know, from, from yesterday here, but but there is a there's a lot of work to do. I think whoever you hire is going to probably be your, your biggest you know biggest decision in the off season. Obviously, moving on from one of these two contracts is big. But I just wonder if they do get rid of Tobias's and they find a way to move on from him, and you you still have Al Horford here. I, I just don't know what that gets done because yeah. at least Tobias can play that stretch four position with Ben and Joel. But having just Al Horford here, I don't know. I, I just feel like you. You need to move on from Al's. Tobias, whether, even though it's bad, you can still work with it with the fit of the team, if you will. But keeping just Al Horford, I think, would be miserable. Yeah, no. I mean, we're back to square one, right? <laughs> I mean, how does Al Horford fit with Joel Embiid? And can, can Al play the four? And I think those days are kind of long gone. And, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, Tobias' contract is, is big, you know. But you do get 20 points from him, and he's a tough kid. I think we saw that yesterday. So, yeah, I don't know if you're kind of just getting rid of guys to get rid of guys, um, you know, especially in the, in the case of Tobias. I think you certainly listen, but you're right. I mean, you, you do one of those. If you do Tobias, then then you, you still have the issue of the fit with, uh, with Al and Joel. By the way, the uh, Sixers have made it official. They have sent out a press release. Brett Brown has also commented on it as well. We'll read that for you here in just a minute. I want to get a couple more comments from – uh, Bobby Marks, ESPN's front office insider. And obviously, um, when it comes to this moment, the Sixers said, look, we, well, there's nothing more we can do. But you you brought up – Richardson brought up accountability. You talked about it with Embiid. Tim Legler was on with us last week. He questioned the accountability as well. Um, to When you look at the 76ers, was that their biggest problem, that maybe uh, that the star players on this team had a little too much freedom? Yeah, I think so. And I think the accountability comes from, you know, we thought that some of it would have been camouflaged when we got to when they got to Orlando and you're in a bubble and you're in this neutral setting. But I mean, a lot of the, the issues that plagued them on the road, you know, when you're, you're 10 and 24 and you're getting blown out um, and from a mental standpoint, 
um, that have certainly questioned um, how much did, were these players held um, held accountable. Right? They only do so much to a, to a point here, and I think that's probably where you see a new voice coming in. All right, Bobby Marks, I know uh, there's a lot happening right now. By the way, I, okay, I, I do want to ask you, you watched Luca yesterday. I'm sure everybody yeah. that's a basketball fan on the planet. Do you think – that Ben Simmons can – like, if you were to say the very best of Ben Simmons, that's the guy that they anticipate seeing. I mean, Luca's not a great – she shoots 30% from three. It's not like he's 40%, but he just super – I mean, he's but so – man, the ones he makes, the, the ones he makes, though. Yep. I mean, you remember them. <laughs> yeah, but he's he's willing, and he just wants that moment, and it seems yeah. that's what separates a guy like that and a guy like Ben. No, you're right. I mean, the guy that's willing to take a big shot at the end of games, right? I mean, I think, um, I think, yeah. I mean, I think if you're Ben, then to get to that point, you know, some sometime down the road, a guy that you want the ball in his hands um, and is not going to defer, um, that's the end goal. I mean, that defines what is an All NBA player, and then kind of just what an All Star is. All right, Bobby, we appreciate the time. Again, Brett Brown fired, according to Woj, and, of course, I'm sure uh, plenty more on this throughout the day. Thanks, uh, Bob. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Bobby Marks, ESPN's front office insider, and check out his piece on ESPN about what's next for the Sixers' Sixers long-form